Welcome to another Mongoose how-to video. Lee Flaherty from the Mongoose Enablement Team is going to walk us through how to integrate a RESTful web service with Mongoose using SOAP UI. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to begin by showing the RESTful web service endpoint and WSDL with available URLs. If we click on the URL, we see that what we have is our standard server and then appended to our server, we have the IDEO request service SVC. And if we navigate to this, what we get is access to a WSDL page. So if we click on the WSDL page, what we get is we get to see a full web service description, which includes all of the available calls that we can make. So if, for example, we take the XML configurations call, we'll be able to see what that does in a moment. So I'll copy that one to my clipboard. And what this does is this lists out the configurations in Mongoose. So here we see the list of default and Mongoose configurations. If I take my web service and just append XML configurations to that, it's going to come back with the list of configurations, default and Mongoose. If I substitute XML for JSON and send that through, then I get the same results in a JSON string. There's a number of different web calls we can make. For example, we can request a token. Now this one in particular is going to fail. So I'm going to take a copy of that URL and change my request to be XML token. And then I'm going to replace config with the configuration I want to connect to. Default in this case. Now this is going to come back with error code 301. And the reason for that is I need to send through additional details with this. So what I'll do is I'm going to take that URL, copy it to my clipboard, and I'm going to move into SOAP UI. Now here I've set up a RESTful project already, and I can create a new RESTful service from a URI. If I paste in my URL request in full and click OK, it's going to create a stub for that request. So I'm just going to rename this as get token, for example. And then what I can do is I can modify and parameterize this as so. So the response type I want is XML. And the config name I want is default. And what that's done is that's just changed the URL or resource parameters. So I've got some now template parameters here, which are corresponding to the resource. So it will change the URL based on the values in here. So if I run this, again, I'm going to get the same error, error code 301, which is good, proves that it's all working. But what I can do now is I can add in my header values. So I'll add that one as a header parameter. And then I will submit this. And now we get a success because we've been able to type it, send in the user ID and the password as header styles. Now there's another type which is these parameter ones here. So what I will do is I will show you a test suite with some new transactions in. So here we've got our get configurations and we can run this as a XML. We've also got a JSON test case, get configurations, run this as JSON and get the JSON response. So what we can do is we can build in test cases. However, what we can also do is we can have a test case where we have properties. Properties include the configuration we want to connect to, the user ID, password, token, and then a blank value just to allow me to clear things out. And these might correspond to constants or variables within a program. If I run through these test steps, then it's going to perform all of those updates as we see here. So we can see the properties are okay. Set credentials took four minutes, get security token. And then it's transferred that token that's been retrieved to the other IDEO requests. Now what are those IDEO requests? They are one where we can list out the users to do a get basic request. So here we see we're getting an XML response type with usernames, user ID and the authorization token. 
properties are a comma separated list and it translates to this request here. If we want to change this to JSON for example it will fail the test but we can rerun and get a JSON string as a response. We also have as well as the basic request we've got these advanced requests where we can pass in more information. So here we still have the response type, the IDO and the properties as well as the authorization but we're able to pass through a filter also a record cap so where collection name is like IDO run that and again we can also order by collection description run that and we've got a, a different response the query type parameters correspond as you see to the parameters that appear after the question mark as well as a, a basic list as we see here we can also get a list with schema again different type of URL this one includes the schema and when we have the schema we get metadata which describes the properties that are coming back so here we see collection name type string which corresponds to the collection name here, which is a type string. So using this, you can collect some metadata and use that to interpret your data dynamically in your application based on the data type that's being returned. The last kind of test that we're going to do is one where we invoke a method. So we'll run through the test steps on this. So here we see the uh, the result of the method invocation and what we have done is we've gone to our language IDs IDO and the methods available here include one where we can get the string table name from the IDO. String table name accepts a language ID and returns a string table name and the info bar. So language ID is input, the other two are output parameters so when we call this, we provide the idea that we're connecting to, the method that we're going to call, our authorization or authentication token, and then we comma separate the parameters. So even though the parameters, the other two parameters are output, we just need to comma separate some, some blanks or some null values. When we run these, we can get the GB strings file, and we can also get the Swedish strings file just by passing in different values. So this allows us to not just get data, but invoke a method. Other RESTful web services exist for updates, insertions, and deletions. Visit the Mongoose portal for more tutorials like this. For tech support, log an issue on Infor Extreme, and you can send your general questions or comments to mongoose at infor.com. If you'd like to stay up to date on what the Mongoose team is working on, follow us on social media. Talk with you soon.